What's up guys, welcome back to the vlog. Before you get, if you get a chance, hit that subscribe button below so you get alerts on all the videos that we're creating. We're creating hair cutting videos constantly. Thank you guys for watching, here we go. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. What's up guys, welcome to today's vlog. Today we're gonna do something special. I reached out to Pivot Point and asked them for a curly textured mannequin because that's what you guys have been requesting. So I wanted to do one of those haircuts for you guys. Plus, I'm really getting inspired by this curly texture. I'm really loving it. What we did today was we had the Andrea mannequin from Pivot Point. Uh, she's got great curly texture. We went in, we cut some graduation, some layers in there. Uh, we built this frame around the face and then we tucked it right around the cheekbone area. The inspiration for this cut came from this picture right here. Um, so you can see that volume and then it just tucks right in. I think you guys are really gonna like it. So we're gonna get started with our step-by-step. -step. Let me know in the comments below if you like this type of cut uh, if you want to see more curly haircuts let me know and make sure you like it share it with your friends and let's get started with our step-by-step -step. here we go all right my hair cutter friends out there I know you're really excited to see this video I was really excited to do this video so we got super extra curly hair a couple things I'm gonna do different than I would normally do on straight uh, straighter hair is go through with the leave-in conditioner. I did that. I also go through with the paddle brush and completely uh, brush through it to make sure it's nice and clean um, because that's going to make it easier to work with the curls. Then I go through and I section off the hair. Sectioning is so important with every haircut that you do. It's also really important with curly hair. I'm not a believer in just cutting curly hair dry. I really like to go in there, build a structure with a purpose, and then go in with some dry cutting at the end. So I think you guys are going to get the benefits of all of that throughout this video. So I section off a rectangular section on the top following the parietal ridge across mid crown like I always do in my videos. If you haven't seen the past videos, definitely subscribe and uh, go back and watch those. But we uh, then we take it and we do the division point, which is the halfway point of the head right behind the ear. And then I go straight down the back with a vertical section. And then I take across the occipital bone. So if you need to rewind it back and watch that again, but the sectioning is pretty simple across the occipital bone, and that's where we're gonna start is at the base of the hair. Now another product I'm gonna use as a tool as I work through this haircut is our Donald Scott Prepare uh, Spray. It's a liquid tool glide. Now this is a product that you've seen in past videos that I've used uh, when razor cutting. That's really what it's made for because it's made to add a little bit of that uh, pure coconut and sunflower oil to the hair to help get through the hair and add a little bit of slip to it. But it also works really great for conditioning the hair and working through curly hair as well. So I spray that on each section before I cut it just to make it easier to comb through. Now I'm going to start with vertical sections, about half inch sections as I work through the back and I'm going to work on a traveling guide when I start the base. So I just work bringing the hair to the previous section. I'm using the wide teeth of my comb. This is the 339 comb from YS Park. I'm also using my Pen Slim Mizutani scissor. It's my new favorite scissor to use. Um, it's got a really skinny blade, so it's easy to work tight in your fingers. Um, this hair is a medium texture, even though it is super curly. Um, so that's a good scissor choice for me. It's a six inch scissor. So as I work down that section, um, I'm combing through with the wide teeth. I don't want to put a ton of tension on the hair, but I also don't want to work through with super wide teeth. If you feel like you have to work through the hair with really wide teeth, you probably haven't brushed through the hair enough. So make sure that you condition the hair the right way, go through with that paddle brush, then you should be able to work with a tighter tooth comb, which is going to give you a more consistent result uh, when you're cutting the hair. So now I've switched my finger angle. So before I was pointing up as I worked across the head. Now I'm pointing down. The reason for that is whenever you're cutting a bob, uh, if you guys think about how sometimes you end up with one side longer than the other, it's because you're not combing the hair towards your guideline. So on one side you would be, but if I kept my fingers the same way and I worked across the head the other way, then I would be combing the wrong way. So I always want to comb that new hair into the guide so I'm pushing the hair towards the center on the right side and I'm pushing the hair towards the center 
on the left side. You could see that nice buildup of weight. The thing I love about curly hair and what was really inspiring me about cutting hair like this is just because you can really see the shape happen. When you cut straight hair, you have to actually give it volume and you have to try to create and make that shape. With curly hair, you see it instantly. It's instant gratification. It's my kind of thing. So as I work through, I'm uh, creating that shape. I can really see it. Now, I'm still working those half inch sections vertical. The great thing about this right now is that if I keep um, working vertically straight up the head in a layering fashion, so pretty much 90 degrees straight out, I'm still going to get that stack because of the curly hair. A lot of people have challenges with curly hair because they can't see the end result while they're cutting. You want to make sure that you take into consideration the fact that the curly hair is going to stack up a lot more than straight hair is. Now, another key thing that I'm doing right here, I'm over directing all the way to the center. You saw me kind of move with my comb. I want to build up weight behind the ear and I want to start pushing the length uh, the opposite direction. I want to push it towards the front of the face. So we're going to close off the face a little bit. So I over direct it and now you can see that weight build up right behind the ear. It looks really nice, but it's still a nice sleek back. It's not expanding too much. Um, this would definitely be your guest preference. So if your guest wants a bigger shape in the back, then add a little bit more of an angle to your fingers, drop your elevation a little bit, and you'll get uh, a bigger uh, buildup of weight in the back. But I really like uh, having a nice sleek back on this haircut. So now, again, pointing my fingers down. Um, this is where it becomes a little bit challenging because anytime my elbow's up in the air, I want to drop my hand. So just make sure you're focused on that elevation and staying consistent with that. You'll also notice that in the very beginning of that part, after I cut the section, I went through and I did a little cross-checking to make sure that my elevation was correct. So um, another good thing to do as you're working through the back of the head. The other thing with curly hair that I definitely uh, notice when working with it is that it's a lot harder to see your guide because you don't have as much of a solid line. So take a little bit extra uh, guide into your section and a little less new hair as you're working through, uh, and it'll be a lot easier to stay consistent throughout the haircut. So we're pulling through the last bit of the section, again, keeping that over direction all the way back to push that weight uh, forward. Now, if they have a little bit looser curl, you wouldn't have to over direct it quite so far. And what we're doing right now is we're preparing that hair. So as I push it forward, I'm preparing it to do something later. So I want all that weight sitting in the front of her head because then I can go through in my dry cutting and create that shape. So we're gonna take a nice horizontal section in the temple area. We've moved on to the next panel. Um, I'm gonna comb that down, keep it nice and natural. Use my comb to kind of see how I want that to fall, but then notice where I held my comb, where I want the hair to fall, and where I actually cut the hair. It's about two inches further down because I'm taking into consideration the fact that that curl is gonna, it's gonna shrink up as soon as I cut it. So I cut my baseline, my guideline, right along the chin, and then I go through and I create these layers uh, by elevating the hair. So I'm gonna start working. Um, I'm gonna create a stationary guide. Everything's gonna be over-directed back towards me. What I really wanna do in this haircut is push all that weight around the front of the face, and then I can go in and have some fun with the dry cutting. So uh, complete over-direction, back to that stationary guide uh, as I work through this side. Instant gratification is what I love. I love uh, cutting curly hair and just seeing the shape unfold. So you can see how it works through the back, nice and sleek in the back, doing the same thing on the opposite side. So I take a small, uh, about inch section, comb it down nice and natural, check where I want that line to be, and then as I hold the hair down, I shift my finger angle to fit that line and I do my cutting. So about two inches further than I actually want uh, the hair to live and that'll give me that nice line there. Then we go through, same thing, going through and cutting the layering. Now you're gonna notice I'm cutting palm to palm. Uh, again, anytime you're cutting on top of your fingers and right now I'd have to lift my elbow in the air, anytime I can not I can go ahead and not lift my elbow in the air and stay more consistent, I do it. So um, I just tilt her head towards me a little bit more. That's the great thing about the client is you can move their head to fit your elevation needs. So I, I pull her head towards me and I can cut palm to palm and stay more consistent. 
Now to finish off, this is the final stretch of the wet part of the haircut. I'm going to go through, take these, uh, kind of horizontal or vertical straps, whatever you want to call them, but straight across the top and over direct everything back towards me, creating a stationary guide again. Uh, so that'll build up a little more weight in her crown area, but then push the rest of the weight to the front. I'm using point cutting because I want a little more texture on the top of the hair. So even with curly hair, even though it's going to be textured, if I do a little bit of point cutting, it's going to give it some more separation. So I go through the top and I complete that. So just overdirecting everything straight back to the crown, uh, the beginning of the crown, more the apex area, top of the head, and just point cutting through. Now I like showing you guys every step of the way. If you like seeing a, a shorter version of these cuts, you can definitely check out uh, my Instagram page, which is at Free Salon Education, um, where, where I'll cut it up and make it a one minute video, um, which could be a cool inspiration. It's a great way to show your clients the haircut as well, if it's something that you wanna do on them. Uh, so check out the Instagram if you get a chance. So that's the last little bit, over directing everything straight back to that stationary guide and just cutting it following the round of the head on the very top. So you can see all of that volume that happened. That's what I loved about the, the initial picture of this haircut. Now I'm gonna use my Bricado mousse. I'm gonna go in, saturate the hair with the mousse. It's a nice medium hold, doesn't get real crunchy. Uh, I wanted more of a natural feel to it. Um, once I get that in the hair, I'll go through and I'll actually put a little bit more in there because curly hair soaks it up. So a little bit more on the ends and then we'll start our styling. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take our um, Ergo blow dryer. I'm gonna put it on medium airflow and the hottest heat level. So I don't want a ton of air going into the hair because that's gonna make it frizzy, but I do want it nice and hot so it dries the hair nice and quick. So uh, that's always a good setting on no matter what blow dryer you have to put it at that setting. And I go through and I just diffuse the hair, not putting my hands in the hair a lot, just going through and using the diffuser and letting it do its job. Now I'm gonna go through and detail the perimeter. So I'm using my scissor and a lot of you guys have asked me, why do I cut hair holding the scissor that way? It has everything to do with being comfortable. So sometimes when I, if I'd have to tweak my wrist and kind of turn my wrist a certain way, I like to switch my thumb and put it in the other direction. And that helps me stay more comfortable in my cutting. I will come out with a video to uh, show you guys how that's done and why and get a little more in depth with it later on. Okay, just finishing up the perimeter. I really am just etching out what I want that outer perimeter to look like and the haircut. You can see all the extra weight sitting around the cheek. That's what we're gonna cut now um, with our dry cutting portion of the video. So moving into that, I'm going to be using my puffin scissor. This is the Mizutani puffin. It's made for dry cutting. A lot of people don't like using razors on, uh, on curly hair. I have no problem with razors on curly hair, but it has to be a brand new blade. Now, if you use the Mizutani Puffin, you can get a razored effect without actually using a razor on the curly hair. So I'm gonna go through doing a tease cutting technique. I've done multiple videos on this technique. And I, so what I do is I just pinch the hair and I start etching out the shape that I want. So I'm half closing the scissor on the hair and just sliding in. So don't close the scissor all the way, just work the hair down into the scissor, pinch it into the blade and half close the blade as you move in and out and it'll start to etch it out. You can see how it just quickly transforms that side of the haircut to uh, have a more flattering look to it. So we just go through using the tease cutting technique and creating our shape. So that is the end result of the haircut. I'm gonna add a little bit of hairspray to it. I hope you guys like this haircut. I really dig the outcome of it. I love the texture, love the shape of it. Um, so let me know what type of haircuts you'd like to see more of in the comments below. Thank you guys for watching. All right guys, and like always, if you like this haircut, then hit the like button, hit the share button, share this video with all of your friends, and also go to freesaloneducation.com. Remember, you can get 20% off if you use the code Matt Beck vlog at checkout. You can get the scissors, combs, clips, everything that we sell on there, and also check out a lot more free salon education videos on the website. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys on the next video. Thanks.